Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video on half planes. So what are half planes? They're actually regions of the Cartesian plane. You get them when you graph inequalities like this. So y is greater than or equal to x plus 3. So here, we're going to graph an inequality that has two variables. It turns out what we will end up will have... The Cartesian plane like this will end up graphing the line and then shading one side of the line like this. That's what we're going to end up with. We call it a half plane because we're sort of dividing the Cartesian plane in half. This half that satisfies the inequality and this half that doesn't. So to graph an inequality like this, we follow these two instructions. The first, though, involves graphing lines. So before we go through more formally how you actually graph this, we're just going to have a quick tutorial on how to graph straight lines. So let's say I want to graph these two lines here on the Cartesian plane. Of course, remember y-axis is the vertical axis and the x-axis is horizontal. So there were two methods of graphing we learned earlier in the year. When it's of this form here, see how it's y equals something, we use the gradient intercept method. And when we have an equation like this, it's not in the form y equals. We can't use the gradient intercept method. Instead, we use the xy intercept method. So let's first graph this one here using the gradient intercept method. Notice this is an equation. It has an equal sign. It's not an inequality because it doesn't have a less than or greater than sign or whatever. So this is how you use gradient intercept form when it's y equals something. So remember the number in front front of x is the gradient. So minus 2 is the gradient. The number by itself is the y-intercept. That's why it's called gradient intercept. You can just read off the gradient and y-intercept. So the way you graph using this method, you mark the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 4. And then you use the gradient, minus 2 in this case, to come up with the second point. So if the gradient is minus 2, which is minus 2 over 1, remember this tells you how far you go right. The top number tells you how far you go up or down. So if that number is positive, you go up, and negative, you go down. So all of this means that if I want to use the gradient minus 2 over 1 to find a second point, I go 1 to the right and 2 down. This line also goes through this point here, 1 to the right and 2 down. Once I have the two points, I just join them up. And then I'm done. Let's look at this one now. 3x minus y equals 6. So we're going to use the xy intercept method. It's not in the form y equals. So I don't know just from looking at this what the gradient and y intercept are. So I'm not going to use the gradient intercept method. Instead, I use the xy intercept method. So the way you use the xy intercept method, you let x equal 0 to find the y intercept. So if x equals 0 here, 3 times 0 is 0, I'm just left with minus y equals 6 times in each side by minus 1. I get y is minus 6. The y intercept of this line is minus 6, so I plot that. Now I let y equals 0 to find the x-intercept. So if y equals 0, I get 3x equals 6, x equals 2. So the x-intercept is 2, and what that means is I've now got two points. Once you have two points that lie on the line, all I need to do is join them up. So now I'm done. It's very important we know how to graph these lines because that will come up. That's the first step when we're graphing inequalities. So let's return to the inequality y is greater than or equal to x plus 3. So the first thing I am going to do is graph y equals x plus 3. 
So I set up my Cartesian plane, y-axis and x-axis. Now, because it's y equals y by itself, I'm going to use gradient intercept method. So the gradient in this case, the number in front of x is 1, and the y-intercept is 3. So I'm going to mark the y-intercept of 3. The gradient of 1 means I go across 1, so 1 to the right, always go right, and then up one. I'm going up one this time because it's positive one. Remember, this number on the bottom tells you how far you go right, and this tells you how far you go up or down. So that means that the line y equals x plus 3 also goes through this point here. Now I have the two points, I just join them up. So I have just graphed here the line y equals x plus 3. So how do I turn it into an inequality? This is what I really wanted to graph. Well, what we do, the second step that was on the first slide, what we do is pick a point that's not on the line, and we're going to test whether or not it satisfies the inequality. The easiest point to choose is this one, 0, 0. So that's the point x equals 0, y equals 0. I'm going to see whether this satisfies the inequality. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to substitute x equals 0 and y equals 0 into this inequality and see if I get a true statement. So if I substitute x and y for 0, I get y is greater than or equal to x plus 3. So this is clearly a false statement. 0 is not greater than or equal to 3. That means that 0, 0 is on the wrong side of the line. The instruction says, after you test the point, if the point did satisfy the inequality, I would shade this side of the line. I'd shade everything here. However, because this point does not satisfy the inequality, if I substitute it into the inequality, I get a false statement. Because that happened, I'm going to shade the other side of the line. So what I'm going to do is shade this side of the line. Everything sort of above this line. The reason I'm shading it is any point in this region will satisfy the inequality. So, for example, you can see the point minus 2, 4. If I substituted that into the inequality, so y is 4, x is minus 2, I get 4 is greater than or equal to 1. That is a true statement. Every point in this region will satisfy the inequality. So by shading it, all I'm conveying is that every point here is in this region. So y is greater than or x greater than or equal to x plus 3 is a whole region. It's half of the Cartesian plane. There are infinitely many points that satisfy this inequality. The line that I graphed is sort of the boundary of that region. All right, let's get rid of this and do another example. So let's say I now want to graph the inequality 3x minus 2y is less than 6. Once again, this will be a whole region. It will be half of the Cartesian plane. So my first step, I'm going to draw up my axis and I'm going to graph the line 3x minus 2y equals 6. So, to graph this line, because it's not in the form y equals something, I'm going to use that second method I went through a couple of slides ago. I'm going to use the xy intercept method. So, if I let x equal 0, I will find the y intercept. If x equals 0, I get minus 2y equals 6, dividing each side by minus 2. I get y is minus 3. So the y-intercept of this line, minus 3, I just mark there. If I let y equal 0, I will calculate the x-intercept. If I change y to 0 in this equation, this just becomes 0. I'm left with 3x equals 6, divide each side by 3, x is positive 2. So this here is the x-intercept, and now that I've plotted the two points, I just join them with a line.
Now, as it said on the original slide, if you have what's called a strict inequality, if it's a less than or a greater than, you use a dotted line. In the previous example, it was a greater than or equal to. So that's why I drew the line as normal. But here, I need to draw a dotted line. So why am I drawing a dotted line here when I didn't on the last one? This signifies that the points on this line are not included because this does not include. It's less than 6. It doesn't include 6. So that's why if it's less than or greater than not equal to then you need to do a dotted line. So this is the line 3x minus 2y equals 6 using a dotted line because it's a strict inequality. So now what I need to do is I need to find which region contains all of the points that I'm interested in. Is it this region on top of the line or this region below the line? To determine that, I need a test point. I need to pick a point that's not on the line. I can't pick this point here, 2, 0, because it's on the line. Once again, the point 0, 0 is a very easy one to work with. If I substitute x equals 0, y equals 0 into this inequality, I get 3 times x minus 2 times y is less than 6. 0 is less than 6. That is a true statement. This time, the point 0, 0, which isn't on the line, does satisfy the inequality. So I'm going to shade this region. It just so happens that this time 0, 0 is above the line, whereas it was below the line last time. So because it's on the right side, the correct side, I shade that region. So I'm going to shade this side that includes 0, 0. Once again, every single point in this shaded region, not the points on the line, but every point that's shaded in green will satisfy this inequality. It's half of the Cartesian plane. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.